you're looking more and more European. Like right now, you're 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 Parisian, is what you are. Hey, white shoes are on. Speaking a little Francais. Eh? <laughs> don't have my I don't have my Coca Cola because I got an espresso. Are you real quick? Yeah. The the uh, the Italians were like this, but we're. we're well, again, the the Parisians very healthy looking, right? They're not overweight like oh, we are. Everybody. Are you amazed how much Coke they drink? Do they drink Coke, a lot of Coke too? They are incredibly fit. A lot of Coke, a lot of bread, but everybody runs and walks everywhere. I mean, it's just it's amazing. But the Coke, like every time I like when we were in Italy last summer, every time I turn around, one of these Italians has got a, a, a dart in their mouth and drinking a Coke. Yeah, and they're a hundred hundred and forty pounds. With what a are cigarette. We doing? With a cigarette. Skin looks beautiful. <laughs> Should we start smoking? <laughs> Should we, haven't we? Even started the, we haven't even started the show yet. We're on fire. I think we should start smoking. Let's get to it. It's the uh, okay. it's the Chris Egan Show. It's brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. Three locations in Sumner, Puyallup, and South Hill. I'm being being told maybe in Paris by next year. Mm. Home of the original No Big Dill Pickle Pizza. Uh, book one of their three food trucks for catering, birthday parties, graduations, corporate events. And find Fat Zach's Pizza on Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, at FatZach'sPizza.com. You can follow Chris, all of his adventures right now at uh, at Chris Egan 5 there on X and catch all of his work at King 5 and of course uh, king5.com and and I I forgot um is it Chris Egan 5 also for Instagram I think so on the gram as the kids would say it yeah yeah okay you've been doing great <laughs> stuff there as well it's un- like you got all the behind the scenes stuff at Chris Egan 5 there on uh and on uh Instagram. Where where do we find you right now? Where are you at? Uh right now I'm at the NBC Hotel. So I uh just uh, returned from the Eiffel Tower where where I was busy all day. Had a one-on-one with uh Vancouver Washington's Jordan Childs, had a one-on-one with Suni Lee uh from oh. Minneapolis. Uh the Golden Girls are back. Uh, Puck, I'm six foot one, but uh, during my interview with both of them, I look like I'm Kareem Abdul Jabbar, uh, <laughs> towering over both of them. But congratulations to them both. Uh, and, uh, and, I mean, they are mega world stars, and wow. for them to take the time and uh, go one on one with uh, yours truly, uh, appreciate it uh, a lot. Uh, they've uh, been sensational. I mean, they're. Uh, you, you know what? In the past, in uh, in Japan, at the Tokyo Games, in China, the ratings were down. But everything right now, one weekend, NBC is just smiling bright because the ratings are up everywhere right now. The streaming is up, so everybody's excited. And you have to give a lot of credit to the U.S. gymnastics team for kind of helping that pump up in the first week of the Olympics. Are the Olympics on NBC? That, if you didn't hear that yet, fuck they are. I know we've been talking about it on this podcast for almost a year now. <laughs> yes, you, you can you can find them on NBC. Well, congratulations. I mean, honestly, to to, to you guys. I mean, yeah. Wh- why do you why do you think the numbers are so are so good? Because the the time difference isn't that much. Because we're not dealing with the pandemic anymore. I think one thing is you got to give a little credit to Paris. I, I think. People are just fascinated with this city. I think uh, a lot of people have not been here, and I think NBC does a great job of kind of showcasing these cities. Uh, the past two Olympic Games, we were battling with COVID, and, and there was no fans. And, and mm-hmm. I mean, it, this place is absolutely packed, Buck. I was at the La Concorde venue yesterday. That venue hosts 3x3 basketball, uh, skateboarding, BMX. Uh, there's there's one more I'm missing in that venue, but it was like it's just a party. I mean, it is nice. just a continual. I mean, you look up and the place is just packed to the rafters. There are so many people from around the world that are here, uh, and it's cool to see. Like you're watching BMX, and there's ten thousand people there. You you know you're wow. watching France versus Japan in basketball. There was 30,000 people watching Josh Hawkinson. He didn't get that many in the big Shorewood Shorecrest battle, I'll tell you that back in the day, Buck. But, uh, I mean. Were they cool all there for Josh Hawkinson? I don't think so, but I got to give Haw- Hawkinson and Japan, I think, went 0-3. But Hawkinson played his lights out in, the, in these Olympic games. Rui Hachimura. Uh, he got kicked out of one game for two flagrant fouls, and he got injured in another game. And Hawkinson was just on fire all week for 
the now I was going to say for the Cougs, but for Team Japan. So it was great to see that. Well, the Cougs and Go Cougs very popular in Japan. Always have been. <laughs> You know what? I, I had my Pac-12 logo on my backpack, and some uh, French Parisian man comes up to me and goes, Pac-2? Pac-2? <laughs> no, go, come yes, on. Yes, I, can't, I really? can't make it up, Pac. He, he, knew his, uh, he knew his sports. I will say uh, they Should have went with Appel. <laughs> they, I'll say this. They love their soccer first and foremost. They love their fencing. Uh, I've never seen a, a group that loves tennis more than the, the French. I mean, tennis is on everywhere here. Uh, but uh, basketball is a worldwide sensation. I think we right. talked about this last week, but uh, they love their hoops as well. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick the Eiffel Tower for all of our, uh, you know, just yeah, to give you a little Yeah, let's get view. in there. Weren't you up on the Eiffel Tower yesterday? I was. It's, and I was up there. Can you see it back there, Puck? Can yeah, you see it? I see it. There it is. There yeah, it is for beautiful. you. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful a city. God, it's a it's just a fabulous it, city. It is it is a gorgeous city. I was up there yesterday, Puck, and 127 steps to the top of the NBC compound. Uh, you do that about four to five times a day with, you know, camera, tripod. It's I just call it a good workout every day. I'm, I'm averaging yeah. about 20, 22,000 steps a day. Uh, oh, but it geez. but it was interesting. Yesterday, before I got to the Eiffel Tower, I'll tell you about the big thunderstorm. I need to get to that compound within a half an hour. I go to the media shuttle, and the media shuttle's going nowhere. And I'm like, what's going on? I mean, we got to get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. And they're like, something's going on. Just patience. Patience. We're still, the van should be going. We're not going. Finally, I'm like, are we going to go? Because I got to get to a live shot. And they go, you wait. You wait. We wait for Prince of Monaco. Prince of oh, Monaco is leaving. Yeah. I said, what? He goes, unless you're a prince, you stay. I go, well, I, I, some people, I said, some people, Puck has referred to me as the <laughs> Prince of Puyallup. <laughs> he literally goes, me not her of Puyallup. I know Monaco. You stay. <laughs> so, so the Prince of Monaco uh, uh, got you exit before I did. So, um, Pack your patience if you ever go to an Olympic Games. I'll say that. Who is the uh, Prince of Puyallup? Is it like Albert or something? Who is that? Or Prince of Prince of Puyallup? You're the Prince of Puyallup. Who's the Prince of Monaco? I I, I think you're right. I, that was, right? that baffles me how good you are. I think it is Albert. Yes, yes. I think it might. I, yeah, Albert the that second. Is a, oh, holy! Because cow, he's buddy. got a. Su- here's why I know this. He's got a super hot wife. Like, I mean, are you uh, looking it up right now? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Like, (laughs) a freaking, she's a smoke show. And I'm, by the way, happily married, Puck. I don't know if we mentioned Oh, I know you're happily married. Come on. I I have to put that out there. But uh, is everybody in shape in uh, Paris? Because it seems like they are. I mean, they, everybody's just, uh, they, I mean, they're all in shape. They I'm going to see if I can save this. And I, and I, I want to see if I can put this up for you to see. And now I'm distracted. I'm going to look. All I'm going to do is look at pictures of her. I, and I'm a little disappointed in myself. I didn't have this information before. Otherwise, I would have been looking for it. Uh, I'm sure yeah. she was at the hotel as well. Oh, she probably was. Well, she probably. Yeah. yeah. What do you think they do? Like, I mean, what kind of gig do you think when you're the prince and princess of Monaco? You basically get to pick whatever event you want to go to the Olympic Games. You get a, uh, a police <laughs> escort and, and, uh, and then you go watch it and then you go home. I mean, it's not what a bad a living. Gig. God, what a gig! I, I mean, is that much, perfect? You're walking everywhere. I mean, are, are we are we putting on weight? I think my pants fell off today, Puck. So I'm eating a lot of bread. I'll say that. But uh, I had. But the your belt pants on. fell off. That's good. I know because I think when you put twenty two thousands, and this goes back to everybody in in Paris seems to be in shape because they, Puck, they just walk. Yeah. Or drive their bikes everywhere. So I think yeah. you just, uh, you know, you lose a little weight doing that. But I just keep thinking, God, I'm having another plate of pasta. I can't be losing weight, but <laughs> tried to put the pants on today and they fell off. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, I'm trying to pull up a picture. Can I share my screen? I don't even know how to do any of this. <laughs> I want to, because I'm so distracted by her. <laughs> I want you to, because I want, just, you got to look at it when you get home, you got to look, or okay. when you get back and you got to look it up. What if when I do? When this podcast is over, Buck, I will take a look well, at the I mean, Prince of Monaco. It's yeah. Prince Albert is what we're going with, correct? Yeah. Um, hold on. Wait what, is there been one sport yet, Buck, that you, yep. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. I, do you see her? Yeah. Kind of like the gal in uh, Lethal Weapon 2. Yeah. 
<laughs> from that's from not a great picture of her though okay if you okay, give me a second was. i'm gonna find a better one okay what, can what you just give doing? can you just entertain me for a little bit here yeah you know what uh puck uh tomorrow how about this stat i'm gonna give a stat to everybody uh on puck sports all right 1960 a young man by the name of herb brooks uh was the last oh. player cut from the u.s men's hockey team Last player cut, that 1960 hockey team went on to win a gold medal. 1980, 20 years later, it is Herb Brooks, we all know, the Miracle on Ice, leads sure. the U.S. to the gold medal. 2004, Puck, is the last time the U.S. men's eight crew team won a gold medal. A young man oh. by the name of Michael Callahan was the last person cut from that boat. Michael Callahan, now at the University of Washington, 20 years later, is now the head coach wow. of the U.S. 8 men's rowing team. And tomorrow, Puck, on Saturday, they will be going for the gold medal. Four Huskies on that boat. A couple awesome. kids, one from Bothell, one from Woodenville. Boys in the boat. Uh, uh, boys in the boat. They trained on the Montlake Cut, and here we go. 2024, they're going to have to take out the Brits, the Italians, uh, the Romanians, and the Netherlands if they want to win a gold medal. But it's going to be fun. And I'll be there uh, getting on a media shuttle at about 5 a.m. And speaking of media shuttles, Buck, I think we talked about this once, about the Parisians, and they don't like to speak English. They, they just don't, if they don't, they just would rather speak French oh, and sure. not English. So I get on a media shuttle at 5 a.m. Nobody is on the shuttle. Just you. Austin. Just me and the driver. Austin Egan is playing on his team, the Edmonton Riverhawks, and they're playing Victoria, the Harbor Cats. So it's 5 a.m. in Paris. So it's like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. in Victoria. So I'm like, well, I'll just turn on the stream and watch the game. So I'm watching the game on my hour and a half drive out to a rowing and crew venue by myself on a bus, thinking, I mean, this is good living. I'm watching my son play baseball. I've got it up. And then I hear the driver, and I'm like, what? And then, and then I'm like, I, I don't know what he's saying. I go, I go no, Francais. Hey. <laughs> watching the game again, watching the game again. Then he, then he says something again in French, yell, like yelling at me while he's driving yelling the bus. Yelling di directed at you. Well, I'm the only one in the bus, Buck, so okay. he's just screaming out loud. <laughs> and I go, no, Francais. Hey. No, Francais. Hey. Watching my Edmonton Riverhawks. Uh, and then uh, he finally. Watching the Edmonton Riverhawks. He turns around, Buck, and says, <sighs> can you turn your phone down? <laughs> Finally resorts to the English that he, he knew he the knew entire it. time. He knew it. And I go, I <sighs> there you go. That's okay. That's it, it, okay. Yeah, someone calling in. They want to. They, they, it's Getting probably calls from it, the U.S. Rowing. Maybe, maybe it's the driver of the bus. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. The driver. I heard you talking about me. Next time you get on the bus. Oh we, man. Uh, well, what there you go. So how'd the River and, Hawks do? The River Hawks ended up losing to Victoria that day, but that's okay. Right. Now, Austin Pitchwell. Austin Pitchwell. I will say this, Puck. The weather has been absolutely incredible during the day uh, it's a little humid us from the pacific northwest not used to that yeah. humidity but then at night it's just anything can happen a couple of nights ago i'm up on the tower and lightning starts hitting and the next thing you know it starts raining and the next thing you know the town is flooding and then uh oh here's puck with his picture look at her. So i entertained see? you long enough puck. I, no 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 but i i was see her i mean come on look what is this guy doing it's with the her? prince of monaco but look at if you Puckett, if you and I were princes, we, we I mean, you could get anybody you wanted. Why can't we have this, like, when we, like, our presidents, the, the wives and stuff? Why can't it be that? Yeah, I mean, if you're the prince of Ballard, I mean, you should be able to. Look at her. God, just a. Yeah, stunning. Just a smoke stunning. show. Yeah, stunning. Very stunning. S sorry. I just <laughs> was gonna... distracted and wanted to. And now, listen, there's people now listening go going, down what the, the hell are you talking down... about? <laughs> I'm gonna go down to the hotel lobby tonight. Hey, I'm Prince of Puyallup. <laughs> hey, start start playing it up. Hey, for uh, for uh, listeners on the on the podcast, yeah, you got to go back and watch the stream and just search up uh, the Princess of Monaco. But uh, anyways, we were distracted. All right, so yeah, you're, you're, the pants are falling off. You're walking. You're walking twenty two thousand steps. You're enjoying the bread. You're enjoying the wine. Were you uh, you interviewed? 
uh, Jordan Childs, and then also Suni Lee. Are those mm-hmm. up now, or when will those be? When can people watch those? I think those are up on uh, King5.com. You can watch those. That will be my story tonight with uh, Jordan Childs. Uh, and then, of course, we got the Olympic Zone every night, and I'll be doing the boys in the boat story tonight uh, on mm-hmm. the Olympic Zone, 730 on King 5. But, uh, yeah, it, you know what? There, there's a lot of pressure on these athletes. I mean, when you come here, Oof. I mean, it, I was watching Puck, one of the gymnasts performing, I think, as they were getting ready to – dismount off the vault and I looked over there and there's there's like 65 cameras just aiming on this I mean it's just incredible the pressure that they're under and you can you know they're they're all strong advocates of mental health we saw that from the Tokyo games and uh Simone Biles has been big on that and it's great yeah. to see whatever whatever they're doing Wait. is working and I, I'm glad that they're talking about it because it helps all the younger athletes out We're- there were you there? Were you in in attendance watching her capture gold? No, I I was not there. I'm usually running around this place, going from event to event. Uh, I'm going to be heading out to the track and field. We've got some we got some cougars out there. We got some cougars running. Um, I mean, I'll be heading out to the crew. We've got sprint uh, canoeists uh, are going to be starting to compete. Track cool. a lot of the basketball finally moves closer. The basketball has been two hours away, so that's that's been rough to try to get out to, to watch the basketball. But three that's on three, closer. three on three hasn't been good. Uh, they got their first win today, Puck. They're one and okay. three, uh, but yes, it has not been good for either the men or the women. Uh, I watched one game and I watched them lose to Australia, and I was uh, too many turnovers. Can't have Oof. turnovers like that, you know. That's yeah. that wasn't good. Wasn't uh, good at all. Simone Biles is just, I mean, it's, it's close to like our family, or at least to me, just because we have a, you know, a daughter that does gym, gymnastics. I just see how hard these, these girls work and the pressure they put on themselves. And I mean, every athlete, every, every athlete puts pressure on themselves, but to watch her go out there and then what happened in Tokyo with her and to just solidify herself as the greatest gymnast that has ever been uh, around. And, you know, she was in a dog fight with the the woman from brazil and she knew yeah. that she you know she didn't run away with it like she didn't dominate it and she had to grind and and for people like 27 years old in that sport that is ancient it's ancient and well, you're, uh, I mean, and she's incredible you're a, yeah you're a gymnastics dad so you've watched this you've seen this and uh, oh. the level they perform at is, is <laughs> absolutely incredible and then you think i mean this team dominated to win that team gold medal. And then you think about some of the, some of the athletes on that team that didn't make it because they were injured during the trials. I mean, you could argue that Shailene Jones is the best on the uneven bars in the world. And that yeah. would have vaulted up the U S to score even more. Uh, so uh, you, sky who got injured at in Minneapolis as well. So there, there's two, uh, two members of the U S team that weren't even here and they're still dominating right and- now, but it's going to be fun to watch them in the individuals coming up as well. And Suni Lee was just great. I mean, that just yeah. just unbelievable uh, what she was able to overcome. I mean, she was, you know, she, there was a worry that she would lose her life of, of all the issues she was going with with her. Uh, uncurable kidney disease. She talked about yeah. that today. She said she was out for six months at one point and uh, <laughs> couldn't do anything. And when you talk about being out for six months or the next thing you know, you're out on the world's biggest stage performing and helping your team win a gold medal. I mean, it was it's absolutely incredible. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been What's fun. What's going on? Why are you, why are you, why yeah, you moving around? Moving. We, got, we, got a, we got a couple that's going to have a romantic night out on the lounge, so I want to get out of there uh, <laughs> their, just, their time. Why, just, why don't you go sit next to them and tell them, hey, I'm the Prince of Puyallup. Have you heard of me? <laughs> <laughs> it could be the Prince of Monaco. I'm not sure. Well, if, well put the camera over there. Let's let's see her. Um, <laughs> hey, you brought this up, and I, you 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 may have seen it or, or not, because you just brought up mental, the mental health of these athletes. Uh, did you see the comments from Mitch Garver? No, I did not see. I didn't. I have not heard. They don't have. Yeah. They don't give you a lot of Mariners coverage over here. In no, Paris there's right not. Now, the, uh, and on the night news, uh, Le Mariners. <laughs> well, I, he I went my in... Mariner, Puck, I wore my Mariners shirt around town one day. I didn't get one comment. Uh, no, really. <laughs> yeah. Is there Jerry DePilto? He's terrible. <laughs> Um, he talked to, he, he went in real depth, uh, with Ryan Divish and Daniel Kramer of MLB.com about uh, this season, how much he's been terrible and said that this has been the worst season of his career. He doesn't think he'll be able to turn it around. 
Um, he thinks it actually can get worse. I mean, these were these were real things that he was saying. He said that he's received death threats. Wow. He's, he's received people telling him to go kill himself. I mean, just it was it was really bad. I mean, to to the point where you're like, I think this guy needs to take a step away for like well, a few days. And but it's, and, but it just you talked about the mental state. I just these athletes and and they put so much pressure on themselves the olympic athletes all professional athletes they want to be you know they chase perfection and and no one wants to win more or do better than them cuz they they have such a high standard for themselves and their competitiveness is is off the charts that's why they're where they're at and you see it firsthand you've seen it with your kids and um it's hard it's hard especially in garver's case that you know he was he was looked at as uh, the big off season piece paid a lot of money and he just hasn't delivered and it it wears on these athletes and I'm you know assuming that it you know for these athletes in in Paris it, it wears on them too it's it's so hard it's four years of preparation and you get ninety seconds to perform well I mean let's look at the world we live in puck and and that's that's a reason for this concern regarding mental health and a lot of that stems from. Uh, I'm doing a podcast from Paris on my phone with you back in beautiful state of Washington. I mean, the access, the ability that we have nowadays, uh, yeah. what what these players get on social media, Instagram, the X, I mean, Snapchat, TikTok. I mean, they're they're everywhere. And you know what? They're trying to help their brand, so a lot of them do it, and they put themselves out there. But when you get big and you put themselves out there, you also have a lot of people that are going to come after you. And, yeah. and Mitch Garver, I've interviewed him many times. Uh, baseball's a, a, a tough sport as it is by itself. I mean, we've we've heard this since we're two years old. I mean, you bat over 300, you know, you, you're going to be a millionaire, and that's you're getting out two <laughs> times. You know, you're only, you know, how many times yeah. we heard that? Oh, my God. You know how many times I've told that to my son? <laughs> I mean, you know, when he struggles, you know, only got one, only one hit today. Well, listen, I mean, you get one hit out of three. I mean, you're a Hall of Famer. So, so I, I mean, I don't know how you combat that. I mean, and I can't, I can't help him out. I mean, I think at one point you just got to shut everything out around you and surround yourself with the people you trust the most, and then go to go do what you've been doing your whole life. I mean, that's all you can do. But it's it's not easy in this world we live in nowadays. I'll tell you that. Don't you think these professional? If you were advising a professional athlete, wouldn't you tell them get off of it? Just, I would get off of social media i mean do you receive anything i mean i mean we, we're in the public spotlight yeah. to a degree uh, it, right i mean uh, i, I receive my fair share of stuff but i don't yeah. and it bothered me when i was younger i don't think it bothers me much anymore and it's not it's not to a degree of what someone who's way way more in the public spotlight or or an athlete but you hear from people and it's it's hard not to react to it at times, but I think if I were in a position like them, more in the spotlight, as an athlete especially, yeah, I, I wouldn't well, have it. I would, I would, or, or I would have it private. Well, like you, I, I've received plenty of, of comments here and there, and you know, you get a lot of good, and then you get a lot of bad. I mean, that's what what comes with what we do. And and I was taught, and I'll give credit to Paul Sylvie, uh, you know, who I was one of the first on King Five that was on Twitter and. You know, you're like, oh, everybody loves me. And then all of a sudden you get bad, bad, bad message, bad message. And you're like, what the heck? I'm responding to this. And Paul's like, no, I mean, you, you don't. Because when you do that, you just open yourselves up for more. And yeah. I mean, there was one comment today like, oh, nobody's watching the Olympics. Well, I want to grab the stats and send it to this person right now. Like, uh, yes, they are, because what you're saying is wrong. And here's the stats to prove it. And these just aren't stats from NBC. These are stats from you know, professional ratings companies, but I'm like, you know what? No, because as soon as I do that, then it just opens up, mm -hmm. you know, the, and, and it's back and forth we go. So uh, yeah, I'm with you, Puck. I think they, if I'm these professional athletes, I think it's fun to get on there. I get it. It's, it's part of their brand. It helps them earn money, but you know what? If things aren't going well, you better be ready it's, to be attacked. And you know, I would shut it down at a heartbeat if I was them. Yeah, it's it's hard not it's hard not to react to it. You yeah, know? and I just it really is. And I would imagine, you know, especially like I would imagine you being on TV too, uh, you know, and then, oh, why'd you wear that? Oh, you look you look terrible today. I mean, it's it's well. You know, I mean, the other day, Puck, I I you know we talk about jokingly these twenty two thousand steps I take I was walking through Paris through a media shuttle I've got I've got a, a tripod on my back I'm carrying a camera I've got this Jujero on my you know like a baby Bjorn 
and I get to my live shot and I'm just dripping and I'm, and I'm just dripping sweat and, and I can't even put on makeup because I put on makeup. It's just going to run. And, you know, somebody gets on there like, oh, you know, Egan's camera person should, you know, help him dry off a little bit. You know, I'm like, God, there is no camera yeah. person. I'm, I'm camera, I'm producer, I'm You're security, everything. I'm Uber yeah. driver. And, but you know what? You just, whatever. It is what it is. And, and the people that really care and know you, uh, they know what's going on. So, you know what? That's, that's all that matters. So we got the, we got the rowing tomorrow on Saturday, the eight. Are they the favorite? To win it? I don't. I think the. It's hard. I can't get a betting line on rowing over here. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> sure, Come on. I'm sure our buddy Jim Moore is putting a wager on it right now as we All speak. Right. I think Great Britain may be the favorite. I think okay. Great Britain has beat this team before, but uh, U.S. has a good lane. Puck. They got a good lane. I like the lane they're in. Uh, so uh, I think uh, they'll be okay. Do you hear well, the? Do you hear the sirens? I in love the, the sirens. The, there's nothing better than a European siren. I, it's oh. so much better. Yeah, I mean, it just, I mean, I feel like Jason Bourne every day here. I yeah. just really, I'm running through. It's awesome. It's yeah. great. Uh, well, it's a great story. I mean, I think everything with the, you know, the the movie coming out. I think the 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 history, the relationship of rowing, uh, the rich history of the University of Washington uh, to be a part of it, to have four rowers on that team, uh, the fact that they trained uh, on the Montlake Cut, it's awesome. That's just a real, real cool story and real yeah. cool to follow that tomorrow. It's going to be fun to be there. And what's great is when you cover an Olympics, you go into what's called a mixed zone and you're in a mixed zone with other media from the other countries. And they put up a big screen TV of the event. You can kind of watch it, but, you know, cruise a long, long haul. So you're watching it there. And it's, you know what, us media in, in the States, we try to be neutral at events. When you're at an Olympics, the media is not neutral. you got people in there cheering, and it's firing off. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And, Puck, I'm going to tell you what. I love uh, moments, but I, I, I got one watching them in their first heat when they won it, and they're coming into the final stretch, and then all of a sudden you hear a 1,000 people just start chanting, USA, USA. You. I cool. mean, that just it, it gets the goosebumps going. It was pretty cool. All right, follow uh, follow Chris there on Exxon and uh, Instagram at Chris Egan Five. All of his work up at King Five King Five dot com. Can you do the math real quick? When does the when does the ozone air back here in the states? Is it seven thirty p.m. seven thirty p.m. Okay, so like four a.m. here. I think I don't know. I'm trying to do the math. No, don't do like, the math. Don't do the math. Yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. know. Seven thirty se- is all you need to. Okay. 7.30, Chris Egan, the very best uh, from Paris. Uh, thank you for doing it. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, your night, and we'll uh, we'll talk next week. You know, this worked good, Puck. I think next Friday I'm going to try to sit down at a uh, local, uh, you know, local oh, eatery. And uh, maybe we can enjoy some uh, escargot and some breads and uh, have some fun during the show. Yeah, pick up smoking. Just get get a get a get a dart in your in your lower lip. All right, there he is, Chris Egan. New episodes of the Chris Egan Show brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza every Friday. We release them at one o'clock, uh, and uh, we drop it on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. Please like, follow, subscribe, leave a comment, and of course, all the content up at PuckSports.com. Au revoir. Au revoir.